was on a flight recently, I had a great conversation with the person sitting next to me. And as we were exchanging business cards, we realized we had had a similar conversation five years ago on another flight. And we also realized we graduated from the University of Texas School of Law in the same year. These kinds of chance connections with people fascinate me. And I suspect they fascinate each of you too, because hundreds of millions of us are using tools just like this one to connect with each other on the internet electronically. But with all of the information that is scattered out there about us, these connections happen far too rarely. But we're human, so we want these connections to be real too. All over 500 of us are right here, right now, at TEDx Austin, to find those same kinds of connections. Over lunch, over the breaks, I'm sure we've met some old friends and connected with some new ones. And if we've been really lucky, we've made some really deep connections too. But I sense that these things happen far too rarely. What if they were to become common? There's a very special guest in the room today. Her name is Maureen. She's my beautiful bride of 20 years. She's the love of my life and the mother of our children. And seven years ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. After five years of remission, we had a recurrence in the winter of 2009. And it was on our journey to MD Anderson Cancer Center that I realized that these misconnections had real consequences. In our case, we needed to get vital health information into the hands of MD Anderson Cancer Center and our oncology team in Houston. But we were driving that information on a flimsy disk in our car. We were lucky. Once they had that information, the Tuesday Tumor Board, where they get together, had about 30 oncologists in the room. And one of those oncologists was a principal investigator for a clinical trial for which my Maureen was a perfect match. These sorts of connections should not be chance when they come between life and death. With all of our tools, and with all of our technology, the internet is not working to its full potential. Not yet. I'm going to make a distinction. It's probably pretty obvious to this kind of tech-savvy audience, but the internet and the World Wide Web are not the same thing. The web is a presentation layer. Pretty spectacular one gives us a really great way to see into the connections of the internet. But it's not the only way. For as much as the web reveals, it also hides too much. HTML is a perfectly good way to mark up information on web pages, but it's not such a good way to mark up information about us. We need a new language for the internet. We need a language for people. We need a contextual markup language. Because, you know, everyone I want to find on the internet is out there somewhere. And with CTML, I'll be able to find all of them and not have the walls of the web hide the rest of them. Same is true of our information, right? I mean, in our case, the information that we needed to share was on a DVD. But if you think about it, even when that information makes it to the internet, the way we do things right now, it's still trapped. We've all had this experience, right? Exploring a new career, looking for a new job. We go from website to website to website, looking for a new opportunity. Sometimes we bump into the same opportunity on multiple websites, right? And this frustration is exactly the same one for employers because they want to cast as wide a net as possible to find that next great nurse. But they have to enter it everywhere. What if they could enter it once and let the pull of gravity reach out through the internet to bring to them the best possible talent for that new opportunity? Of course, this isn't just limited to people problems. 
It's related to our information too. Even with all of the electronic history and electronic records we have for our immunizations, we carry that little paper card, right? We know the one, to our school administration office, and we give it to them so that we can register our kids for school. And of course, camps ask for it and everybody else over and over and over again. And with our overburdened doctor's offices and our overburdened schools, shouldn't we just be able to share a tag with them? Because the internet's are, the information's already out there. Now, Nancy, at the beginning of the day, talked about the photos that they're going to load on Flickr, which is great, right? But I suspect a lot of us have been taking some pictures throughout the day, too. And so we'll load them maybe to Snapfish or Shutterfly. And in order to make a little bit of sense out of all of those photos, we're going to put some tags on there. Not like the tags that we do for family parties where we want to be able to find crazy Aunt Mary or Uncle Joe, but tags of our friends here, Shane, Dave, Anna. And when I want to go look at all of those photos with all of those wonderful tags, what do I have to do? I go to Flickr, I go to Snapfish, I go to Shutterfly. But what if the photos assembled themselves around the tags as opposed to the tags assembling themselves around the photos? Hmm. Okay, then whatever photo viewer I choose, I pick my tag and I can see all of the photos that we've all taken of this experience right here, right now. So shouldn't we have a who tag? I mean, we've got information about us scattered everywhere. Shouldn't we be connected to it too? I mean, every time we change jobs or go to a new school, what do we do? We re-enter information in every one of those places. Well, we actually don't re-enter it. We give it to them on a clipboard, and then they re-enter it. Shouldn't I just be able to share my who tag? Because who I am already exists. Same challenges with our information. Our information, the way we store our information, and those responsible for recording that information are not the same thing. And so in this world where who I am and what I am are no longer in the same database, one of these barriers drops away because I'm connected with my tag to everything. And more barriers start to fall because since I'm connected to everything, I really don't care what database is in, do I? Now, think about these bits of information about us like a raindrop. And think about what Vince Cerf, the father of the internet, has talked a lot about lately. If you're in tune with this kind of stuff and all the chatter out in the blogs, he's talked about it a lot. There's this intercloud problem. But from the perspective of a raindrop, there is no such thing as a cloud. The clouds assemble around us, not vice versa. So websites stop being destinations and they become viewers. Whether it's MD Anderson Cancer Center or Nursing Jobs or Monster or Facebook. They let me see all of my connections through their lens into the internet, not just the ones trapped in their websites. And think about that information. Now, when I have this tag that I can share that's private and secure, then whether it's my doctor, my school, my camp, or the Department of Health and Human Services, rather than making all of these poor folks copy information over and over and over again, just so that everybody that needs to see it can, I just give them my tag. So, thus far, we've looked at this at the very individual level. But what happens when we zoom out and look at this at the bigger picture? Well, I want Maureen's tumor to not just be visible to her oncology team in Houston, but I want every drug company, I want every clinical researcher, I want every geneticist like Dr. Wagner to have a good darn look at that because I want the answer to her cancer right now. 
And so what happens when we can suddenly see this whole fabric and not depend on whether the Cleveland Clinic or the Mayo Clinic or some other database or website has the information? Well, now that clinical researcher can look out over the whole little C cloud and see everything. And remember how I said who I am and what I am were separate? Well, now that information, that information, sorry, there's one down here too. Um, that information is suddenly available to them. And what they can figure out is exactly which patients have the kind of cancer or whatever other disease it is that they're working on at that moment. And because it's private, because they're only seeing that little bit of the raindrop, until the person that's connected with that health information says, yes, I want to accept that invitation, all that researcher knows is that that person has a tumor, but they don't know who. Now, this doesn't just have implications for health. We've talked a lot today about some of the uh, economic situation that we found ourselves in, caused by this implosion in mortgage-backed securities a few years back. It's really no different than, um, than health information, right? What we couldn't see in this case was not those with a disease, but we couldn't see diseased loans because the holders of the mortgages wanted their privacy. They deserve their privacy. It's our information, right? But if I can disconnect those two things, now, instead of the Cleveland Clinic or the Mayo Clinic being the barriers in the internet, in this case, it was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and, and everyone else in, in the financial system, I can see just those bits of information. I can see those risky loans. Now, I believe a lot in the power of people. I was particularly compelled, I don't know about you all, but uh, listening to David Cameron's talk this morning uh, about the notion of how we think about government differently with the power of information technology. I had the pleasure of being on the e-government task force in Texas back in 1999. Uh, we had the internet then. Um, and one of the things that we worried about was, you know, are we just replacing the blue pages in the old phone book? with the blue links of the internet. I mean, I couldn't help but think when I saw that Missouri portal that, that, that Prime Minister Cameron shared of, that's great, but why do I have to go there, right? This is a different way of thinking about it. So instead of worrying about, you know, is, is, is my driver's license a city thing? Is my business license a, a state thing? You know, or is this a federal issue? I don't know. Right? Nor should I have to know. I should have the information be able to wrap itself around me. Think about me government instead of e-government. And think even another step forward and don't just think about the delivery of services, but aren't we as individuals together government? And so when you think about things like Move On or the Tea Parties or, or what's been happening overseas, it really is about the individual coming together. Because at the end of the day, individuals are the state and not vice versa. In the physical world, I can only use these threads one at a time. Right? can only make one piece of fabric at a time with these threads. Now, in the internet, these sorts of limitations go away, right? Because in the virtual world, I can be anywhere, everywhere, and nowhere, all at the same time. So I can use these threads repeatedly and simultaneously, creating an infinite number of possibilities for digital fabrics. So the future of the internet doesn't just depend on linked data. It depends on linked people. It's about us. It's about the power of people connected. But this future of the internet, this future of CTML, can't happen if we leave the threads of the idea here. And this is our opportunity, not only to just have more control over our own information, 
but to be able to weave together the threads in our corner of the internet to work on matters of great importance to us. For me, it's about a cure to cancer. It's about Maureen, it's about Kathan, and it's about 28 million other cancer survivors just like them around the world. Kathan is a third grader in our children's school. He is an amazing kid, and he's fighting leukemia. And winning, I might add. And I know Kathan is watching this right now from home because he had his last hard treatment on Thursday. He's feeling a little bit under the weather. So I'm going to look at that camera back there because it has the red light on right now because I want to look at Kathan at home. Kathan, you'll remember last year at school that uh, before I went on did that big bike ride of mine uh, around Lake Tahoe uh, with team and training, I shaved my head in your honor. And I promised you that I would keep my head shaved until you were done with your treatments. However, in the spirit of right now, my little friend, I'm changing that promise. I am not shaving my head until we have a cure to cancer. And I only hope that this little project I've been working on for the last two years, and a little project that I think all of us here and other people watching are going to work on too, are a small step towards that future. You're a brave hero, and you inspire me. And so, I ask you to join this journey to a new internet. We do not want, I do not want to deliver this future to you. I want to create this future with you. We've created a little special spot at our website just for that purpose. I ask you that you join us on this journey and let's reweave the fabric of the internet together right now. <laughs>